Hey guys, just wanted to share my experience, my time visiting the, the Well Church in Madeira. Um, the Pastor David Hawes, I believe it is. I, I actually, I really have a hard time with names and uh, I, I, I think that's how you say it, but don't take my word for it. But Dave, David, um, I connected with him and, and was invited to come visit. And it was on a, so we're in COVID right now, it's 2020. And um, I was planning on coming. It was a Saturday night service kind of at David's house. And it wasn't the regular like Sunday morning service, but it was just a Saturday night type of thing. Um, and Madeira, I was thinking Madeira Ranchos for some reason, but it ended up, it, it is in Madeira. So if you are in Madeira, it's, it's a, a great church and I'll tell you all about it right now. But, um, but I was planning on going uh, with me, Miss Kay, and one of my daughters. And um, we, we were looking forward to it. It was a couple of weeks. We, we missed one week that they were doing it because of something else, I think a, a family birthday party or something. And uh, so I had been looking forward to going. I really enjoyed my time with David on the podcast. You can check his podcast out. I don't remember what number it is, but you can just search his name and it should pop up, Influencers Podcast, David. And I, I enjoyed my time with him. It was fun. And so I was looking forward to it. Um, the time came and Miss K was not feeling too good. And then, so I, you know, I was still going to go. When I say that I'm going to go somewhere, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to be there. I'm going to do it. And it's just the type of person that I am. And um, so it kind of almost backfired on me because I noticed on the announcement on the Instagram, uh, the Well Madeira had put up kind of what we were going to be doing that day. And it was communion. And I don't know what your initial, when you hear that a church that you're visiting is going to be doing communion, um, I don't know what you think, but I honestly, it's just my honest, um, what happened. I was like, oh my goodness, this is, besides there being a missionary speaker there, this is like the worst thing, uh, the worst day that I could come and visit. And um, so I, 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 you know, I had already said that I was going to go. Um, and, and like I said, it's just kind of good or bad. That's, that's, that's it. So communion, I, I was, and the daughter that I was, I was taking, we have kind of a fun history with communion. And that, my thing with communion is a lot of people get really sad and depressed almost. Real, it's a real quiet, som somber um, experience typically in most churches when they take communion and that's okay i'm not saying that's bad or good or whatever it's just my my preference or, or or my perspective on communion is kind of more typically more on the joyful um thinking of it like when i think of what god did on that cross with jesus you know being being that picture of god closing that gap or whatever you want to you know, however you want to view that. Um, I want to keep theology out of, out of this. It's not what this, this is for. But I, I get excited. I'm filled with joy. I'm, it's a happy thing. And that can sometimes uh, cause problems if you're in a congregation and everyone's like crying. And, and, and I get it. I understand what they're kind of thinking on. And, and, and that's great. And sometimes I'm quiet and, and thoughtful during communion as well. But not always. And one time, uh, me and this daughter, we were at a church here in Fresno, and, and um, we kind of, we noticed in the back where everybody had gotten up and gotten the little cups of communion, the little juice, and everybody had already had their turn, and, and we had had our turn too, but I, I kind of poked her, and, and I said, hey, let's go get, let's go get the rest of Jesus' blood. There's more Jesus' blood, like, we should partake of that it shouldn't go to waste <laughs> and so we get up we're just having a good time having fun and we go over and get the juices and we're pretending like we're throwing them back like shots of jesus's blood and for us it wasn't sacrilegious it wasn't being disrespectful we didn't mean it to be but someone kind of took offense to that and, and, and thought we were you know being like that and um, kind of had a conversation with us in, in the law. And it was just kind of a, 
I wouldn't say a fun, it was fun experience. It was just one of those things, but it was kind of a story with us. So we have a connection when it comes to communion. So we're driving. So I go and my kids, I've got five kids that, that live with their mom. And, and, and so I went and picked up my daughter and I'm telling her on the way there, uh, we stopped on the way. So Madeira is, it's a real Madeira way out there. It's like 30 minutes away. And so we stopped at, um, I was, running a little behind but we still had time to stop at uh chronic tacos there off of herndon and 99 so right as you exit fresno we stopped there uh, we got a couple bowls of uh some beans and rice and carne asada and i got cheese she doesn't get cheese and so we're sitting out there on the patio and um we're, we're talking i think that's when it comes up that they're gonna have communion and so I kind of talked to her a little bit of what I said right now. And, and we were kind of like, oh, man, like, oh, well, like, it is what it is. We're already going. So, and we talk about that, that a lot of churches just, you know, it's just one way of taking communion might be the best way to say it. So fast forward, we finish our meal. We're driving up there. Uh, there's some construction going on in 99. And, and, but we get there. We get there right on time. And Dave. Uh, lives in a new kind of a, a, a house track development. Uh, I used to do con construction. I don't know why I'm getting hung up on these words, but uh, my brother was actually the home builder of that area, and that's kind of how we connected. Um, and so it's a beautiful, it was a beautiful neighborhood. And like I said, this isn't their normal Sunday morning service. I might have to go back on a normal day if we ever have any normal days post-COVID-19 and but it was just a, a Saturday night gathering and so we get there um they have some signs that say the well Madeira um, I forget exactly what some of the other ones say but the, the gate to the back is open and so we kind of walk in and walking around the corner it's the first time that I've ever in person um met David the pastor David uh or anybody at, at that location at church and so we kind of round the corner and, you know, it's kind of exciting. I get excited when I visit a church or meet new people. I love meeting new people. We round the corner and, and they have this little, uh, not barbecue, but like a fire pit, little one with the fire, uh, the bricks around it. I think it might not even be bricks, but it's kind of there and there's chairs kind of set around and people are, you know, small, small group at this point, they're talking um some people have brought food to to eat and there before the service i typically like to get a little there a little there early uh, I'm, I'm usually an early person but i didn't want to get too early um, so we show up right on time um dave right away just comes up and and says hi and, and very warm um uh, as a pastor sometimes you get all kinds of different you know pastors they're not all the same. Not all churches are the same. And so I was very, felt very welcome. He immediately, um, he met my daughter. We talked to her for a second, introduced us to the people that were around. He was very friendly. Um, the people that I was meeting were, were friendly. Um, we sat down and, and immediately felt comfortable. Uh, it felt good. It was in the his backyard he's got a garden he's got different trees i didn't really get to talk to him too much about that we were talking about other stuff god stuff and afterwards but we we forgot to bring chairs you're supposed to bring chairs on these saturday nights and they had two we had the best seats in the house and so it felt great as a guest very welcomed um that's that's what i i i I want to stay there for a second because that's that's huge i think that's huge that might be the biggest thing that i see that churches lack many times is you got a new person there that, that's the first first uh, impressions are, are, are very important they're very long lasting they're not everything but they are big and, and the first impression there was was amazing it was great and um so we're sitting there for a little bit service is about to start you can tell the the worship leaders are getting ready and uh, we start talking to this one couple and we kind of we kind of had to stop talking because service began so um what i liked about the service the actual service part was dave i I've, i really like this about dave and so I'll, I'll speak highly of dave i really enjoyed him on the podcast some things that he said 
but I really love how he, the, it didn't seem like the service was about him or focused on him. It felt like if he wasn't there, that we would still have had service, that the people there were, were a big part of the service. Uh, we sang a, um, Isaac, which I got to meet. I really like this guy. Hopefully have him on the podcast soon so you guys can meet him as well. But a, a young man, I'm not sure how old, but um, he was, uh, you can tell he was excited to lead worship. And they were uh, asking for songs and kind of got a couple. He sang a couple of songs, really good. Um, I, I really enjoyed the worship time. Um, but afterwards, they, they got into a time where they opened the scripture. And it was kind of like David wanted this experience, but it was kind of like sitting around the campfire, just with your friends. And, and nothing too, it wasn't formal. It wasn't awkward. It, it, was, it was very comfortable. Like everybody was relaxed. And we opened up the scripture and we read, uh, we took turns kind of reading. And, and as we read a few verses, we would stop. And, and Dave had everyone kind of just chime in. And I know there's people out there that don't like that. I know people that do like that. I'm never going to be judging these churches of right and wrong. It's just, you know, what I'm going to share my experience and, and what happened. And you may or may not like that. You might hear it and go, wow, I want to go check out that church. You might hear it and say, that's not the church for me. Um, and that's okay. There's lots of churches. But um, I liked that he got everyone involved. Everyone felt, I could tell that everyone felt very comfortable and confident in sharing. Um, comfortable as in, you didn't, you didn't need to sound like a theologian. Nobody was sharing all this crazy. Some people were, were you could tell their personalities. Some shared longer, some short. Uh, but it was really cool. It was really fun to kind of hear the different perspectives as we went around. As we finished that, I, I believe there was a time of just kind of sharing uh, the stories about what's going on. Going on. And people started sharing about uh, having difficulty. One, one person shared ha having difficulty in that she's going to have to find a new place to live pretty soon. And she has some dogs that she might need to find a place. And, and you could tell that she was very um, comfortable emotionally letting that the people around know that. And I thought it was interesting that David didn't like try to fix her problem at that moment. And I thought it was cool because he was really good at um, empathizing. I think the right word is uh, having empathy or uh, sympathizing. I don't know what the correct word is, but it was really good in my opinion. It was, it was uh, somebody else shared something and, and oh, uh, yeah, a gentleman shared about his struggle with getting upset and having some anger and, and david as the lead pastor you don't see this very often and i i love this i think it's very important uh you may disagree but the pastor of this church it's a small church 100 people or so i mean in madera but the pastor had no problem saying you know what brother i struggle with that same thing this week or the last couple of weeks of, of getting angry and losing my temper or whatever it was like i love that um we've talked about this on the podcast before with different ministers that that i i just encourage ministers to be able to do that the more you're able to do that the, the less danger there is to being isolated and, and not being able to talk to anybody about your struggles so I, I was surprised how how much the pastor shared and how open and honest he was about it and i and i like that i did like that um we continued to get into some more worship and, and isaac did a great job i'm really looking forward to uh getting to know him a uh, cool story i won't start sharing any of it here but we talked afterwards so fast forward worship was great a couple songs people some people had to leave people started to leave him, but right as we right as we started to get through with the service immediately people uh came up and talked to us and that was cool. I, I, again, it goes back into hospitality, but I felt very welcomed. I felt it was nice to connect. Um, almost everybody was like coming and said hi and stuff. So that was good. I like a cobble. Um, but it was starting to get dark. People, people left, but a couple of us stayed. And I like to get there early. Like I said, I, I wasn't able to do that this time, but I like to stay late as well. I like I always feel there's a there's a guy named Tommy Tenney, and if you haven't read his book The God Chasers, it's, it's kind of a cool book. 
Um, even if you disagree theologically 100% with him, it's a cool story. And part of his story is like he, he started to feel this anticipation that God was going to do something in this service. And he kind of, he didn't want to miss it. And he talks about, well, you'll have to read the book. So check it out. Check it out. Um, I don't have a links or anything. Just look up Tommy Tenney thought chasers and as you're doing that remember uh dorina is coming out with the book pretty quick um just a shout out to dorina walk run soar that's a, like a devotional thing so anyways tommy tinney he's like has this expectation of god and i think we're lacking that sometimes in our services and stuff but i i always have this like what's gonna happen god what are you gonna are we going to be able to play around, have some, have a good time, pray for people? Are we going to start worshiping again? Is somebody going to teach something from scripture that's like, whoa, awesome? Or are we just going to connect as, as brothers and sisters in Christ? And so I always have that, I hate leaving early, unless I'm ditching out on a church. And that's a whole other story. Um, I'm famous for leaving after worship. Um, but that's all together a whole bit, a different video. Um, so we're there and I'm not leaving. I'm going to be the last one to leave. Right. And I, I connect with Isaac. It's talking to Isaac and we get into his story. Um, and there's another couple there and we just talk and David is hanging out with us. Just, just a cool guy. You know, you have these people that you're like, I wish I could be more like him. I, I, I know I love myself. I know God made me special, but if I could be someone else, I, that David would be in the running. <laughs> He's just a cool guy. But what I mean by cool guy, was just, he was there. And it reminds me of the name Emmanuel for God, God with us. The pastor didn't go off or, or, or get into study and, and, and leave us. And, and, but he was, he was there. It was like he was enjoying being around his people. And, and I could tell that these people loved their pastor and their pastor loved them. And there was other leaders there as well. So, um, uh, but yeah, we, 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 uh, time came where it was getting late. I know they had to get up early for a service the next day. So we walk out, Isaac was leaving, got to, you know, say goodbye to him. And it was just me and Dave at the very end and my, my daughter. And it was good talking to him real quick. I didn't want to keep him too long, but I just wanted to, to encourage him and bless him and, and, and tell him, man, that I really like what you're doing. I like that you're getting everyone involved. And you don't have this hierarchy of God, pastor, elder, deacon, and, and everybody else. It felt like everyone was uh, the body of Christ. And, and, and you know, we, Christ is the head. He's the leader. We all have our different parts. So that was cool. Um, talked to Dave and uh, just said goodbye. And, and oh, we, I told him about the communion. Oh, I forgot about communion. I'm so sorry. So uh, at some point in the service, we take communion. And before we did, <laughs> David starts talking about how many times we only have one part of communion where we're sad and, and somber and quiet. And, and he explained that there's really, for him, he saw it as in kind of like three parts. And you can kind of reach out to him if you're interested in, in his teaching on that. I, I liked it. Um, but he did emphasize that there is a time of celebration with communion, of, of being excited and, and so thankful and, and happy, filled with joy for what God has done. And, and I liked that. And I was, me and my daughter, you know, during that time, we kind of chuckled because, wow, you know, you don't get that everywhere. And I like that for me. So I, I told him that and I let him know that we almost didn't come. I, I was almost going to back out of it. Miss K wasn't feeling good. She stayed home. And, and then the communion. But um, we just kind of laughed about that. So finished the night. It was late. I felt, it felt really good leaving. And when you feel good when you show up and you feel good during and you feel good leaving, I just, if anybody, if you're in Madera area and you're looking for a church or maybe your pastor is blessing you to kind of move on and it's not the right fit, um, you know, I definitely encourage you to, check out the well madera you can find them online i know they're live streaming a lot of stuff right now because of covid um but if you can connect to them david haws i believe h-a-w-e-s is the last name and if you can't find them connect with me and i'll, I'll do this way i'll put the link to his podcast it was one of my favorites 
um, in the description here. I'll put the, the church website, their Instagram. You'll be able to find them. Excuse me. I have wings tonight. Wing stop. I haven't had them in a while. I've been kind of losing weight for a while, and, and right now I'm in a good spot, so I can kind of eat whatever I want. I had wings, and it was good. I, I, I love the Korean barbecue sauce. I forgot to ask for it to be wet. I didn't have enough sauce on it, but I got the lemon. I tried the lemon. Last time I had a, a MMA fight, we had some wings, and I tried the lemon pepper, the dry, and that was good. And uh, so I got a couple of those, a little bit of that, uh, the Hawaiian one. Just, I just like one or two of those. And then the mango one is spicy. Got just one or two of those. The Korean, the spicy, uh, sweet Korean, that's what I recommend. But anyways, we're recommending churches right now. Um, but if you're in Madeira, I, I, I definitely encourage you not to go there, but to go check it out. Go and connect, meet David, say hi, say, say hey, Nick Rodriguez sent me over here, um, or, or whatever, it doesn't matter. But um, check them out. So I hope you enjoyed this um, church experience. It's not really a church review. I'm not giving stars out. I'm not going to tell you two thumbs up or one thumb up, or I'm never going to say anything negative about any church or ministry that I do a review or, a, or it's really a review of my experience of the church, of the uh, ministry maybe, or of certain things. I don't know. It, we'll leave it up to, to whatever, but I hope you enjoyed it. hope you um, can understand what I was saying. And I look forward to sharing more experiences with you. Um, if, if you ever have any connections, you want to shoot me, connect me with awesome people in the Central Valley area. Fresno, California is where I am specifically, but i um, looking forward to, to hearing from you guys. God bless you guys. And thank you, David. Uh, thank you for the invite and thank you for making me feel, me and my daughter, uh, feel very comfortable and, and very, very good, good evening. So good that uh, I'm going back tomorrow night. And I'm looking forward to doing it again. It's a little bit of a drive, but I, I want to go maybe this week and maybe one more week. And it's not going to be a, a church home that I go to just because of the distance. But I, I can't, you know, I, anyways, I'm rambling. I love you guys. Um, see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, like, all that stuff, share. And uh, get, uh, what's your review? Did you go to Madeira Church? Did you like it? Oh, well, I want to know. I want to hear. Let me know. Love you guys.